But first, Julia Lees's resignation there from the Shadow Cabinet is generating predictable headlines about Peter Dutton being in trouble and the Liberal Party being in disarray. In fact, what it's really done is highlight the divisiveness and inherent difficulty in this constitutionally entrenched voice to everyone on everything. Lisa is fortunate that he belongs to the Liberal Party, belongs to the Liberal Party and not Labor, which will allow him to stand aside from the front bench in order to vote against the party room decision. Now, Lisa did that today in a very dignified way, as is his right. And shouldn't be criticised for that. It's the right of every Liberal, unlike Labor, which would have expelled him for defying the caucus. In his resignation statement, Lisa said that he would be campaigning for a yes vote in the upcoming referendum. Yet in the meantime, he told us he'll be working to change the proposal because, as he said in the press club just last week, as it stands, it'll make the practical business of government even more difficult and complicated. But what if the government refuses to budge on the current proposal, which even the Attorney General admits will allow the voice to have a say on everything and could readily end up with the ordinary business of a government, a government elected with a clear mandate, subject to adjudication by unelected judges in the High Court. But what will Lisa do then? Vote yes to a fundamentally flawed proposal because doing otherwise would be disrespectful to Aboriginal people? Or vote no to a voice that would fundamentally disrupt our system of government? Because constitutional change is for keeps, we've got to get it right. Yet as Lisa's statement today makes clear, we have not got this right. Or should I say, the Prime Minister has not got this right. If we see the government willing to remove those issues in their referendum proposal, that, that will cause con constitutional controversy. That we can have the voice in the Constitution uh, and that we can maintain the supremacy of Parliament and we can move forward as a nation together. Over the next six weeks, I'm going to work as hard as I can to get those changes implemented. Now, I give Lisa two chances here to change the PM's mind, Buckley's and none. A Prime Minister who wouldn't change the voice to satisfy his own Attorney-General and wouldn't change the voice on advice of his own Solicitor-General is hardly going to change the voice to make it easier for the former Shadow Attorney-General. All along, the PM, who said he represented safe change, didn't he, at last May's election, has chosen to weaponise the voice against his political opponents. This has never been an exercise in bipartisanship or consensus building, as any constitutional change should be. It's always been an attempt to shame Australians into making far-reaching and all but irreversible changes to the way we're governed, to divide us, divide us and bring about co-governance by stealth, to give less than 4% of people a special say in decisions for 100% of Australians, to preference the less than 1 million of us who have Aboriginal heritage going back 60,000 years, more of a say in how all of us are governed. The other 25 million of us have all helped to build this country since 1788. Constitution making should never be a winner-takes-all process. But this is what the Prime Minister is making it, and this is just one reason why the voice should be defeated, because this voice is not about recognition, I think recognition is something most of us support. This is about power. It's about racial division, and that should be rejected by all Australians on principle. Now, I can understand the pressure Lisa has been under. Noel Pearson's bullying last week, essentially accusing this faithful Jew of acting like a Nazi, must have hurt Lisa deeply. Because I'm wondering whether Julian expects us to wear a tattoo identifying ourselves as Indigenous. Is that what he's saying? Or that our clothes should be adorned with some kind of badge identifying us as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander? It's hard to avoid the conclusion, listening to that, that Lisa's been bullied into resigning. And now, of course, having bullied him into submission, people like Pearson, well, they'll praise him as a man of honour. It should never have come to this, with people being called racist just because they don't like a race-based body entrenched in our constitution. To me, this just makes it more important than ever that bullies don't get their way. 